The Thinking Man's Universe, Part 3, The Next Cosmology. So, how would we go about relegating the Big Bang from its current uh, presumption as potentially complete and sufficient description of the entire uh, infinite universe to a more probable disposition as a finite constituent to the ongoing hierarchy? Well, we will present a number of philosophical approaches to the problem, and while the scenarios presented herein won't be very likely to be viable candidates themselves for what we eventually discover, it's, it's a good philosophical exercise to show uh, a more probable approach to the problem than our current disposition. And our first association we might make uh, to make the Big Bang a finite structure is that the black hole uh, uh, should be characterized as a causal candidate for the Big Bang. Uh, the black hole being ostensibly um, the destination for all matter given an infinite amount of time and that it can grow theoretically as large as possible to contain however much matter we need to characterize the Big Bang, uh, the black hole is a good association uh, for a causal candidate. Also, the only two objects in the universe that we associate singularity uh, with is the black hole and the Big Bang. Now, uh, singularity from a Bayesian sense is more likely a a coping mechanism for trying to project what we do know out to infinity. But nonetheless, uh, these association, this singularity association with the Big Bang and the black hole makes them perhaps two sides of the same coin. Um, so the ostensible idea is that somehow a big bang, a black hole got large enough to somehow reverse itself or break some barrier and r reverse uh, out uh, uh, the matter and curved space that we see in the Big Bang. In fact, Stephen Hawking already has uh, made a, a beautiful um, finite example of this in, in surmising that the black hole may get so big that it overcomes some internal barrier and punches a wormhole through to another place and we see the Big Bang come out. A great finite uh, 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 explanation for the Big Bang. So, uh, how, do we, how do we examine the mechanism that would might reverse a black hole and make it spew out uh, uh, the enormous amount of matter we see expanding around us in the Big Bang? Now, the best way to examine how a black hole might do that is to examine the Bayesian progression of material at very small scales. That is, uh, we don't, from a Bayesian viewpoint, we don't think that uh, the smallest particle ends at the quark. We rather think that there are ever smaller sub particles sequestered within. Therefore, we might also think that a black hole doesn't collapse complete to singularity upon overcoming the exclusion principle of quarks or neutrons. Uh, and go all the way to infinity. We think that, well, it, it has other smaller particles it has to deal with. Also, we might imagine these other smaller particles are ever more compression resistant because that's the stage of events. Um, atoms compress into pure neutrons. Pure neutrons uh, theoretically compress into pure quarks. And so on and so far, forth, uh, that each one of these stages of smaller particles are ever more unimaginably compression resistant. So it's several compression stages down. Perhaps the next one, perhaps it takes five more collapsing stages of en or a hypothetically enormous big, black, big bang black hole to, um, to cause its reversal. But at some point we might imagine that these tiny cores of unimaginably dense um, uh, particle uh, compressions, something crazy happens when they collapse. And boom, it all comes out. Now, a more pedestrian idea would be that you would have some kind of shift to antimatter or anti-gravity or enormous energy outputs that we, we can't yet categorize. But we look at the Big Bang and we say, well, something kicked it out of there. So one of these collapses caused everything to just blow apart with unimaginable force and throw the material translating out away from a central point. Uh, but also, since a, a black hole has a lot of curved space uh, to gravity well and a space well, that, that this relaxation of the gravity might account for uh, uh, Einstein's observation that space itself is expanding. We also notice one other thing about the universe, though, that it gets stranger the further away from the human scale we get to our sensibilities. We see the, the uh, quantum uncertainties uh, at small scales to be strange and the expansion of space at large scales to be very strange and time dilation, etc. that we might imagine a stranger circumstance for our 
uh, Big Bang scenario. So imagine that we're down inside our, our enormous trillion light year wide black hole and we're sitting at our little kernels, our little highly compressed light, one light year across um, kernel core and it collapses. Now it collapses from the inside out because that's where all the weight is in the middle where all these particles press in, in on it and that as it collapses from the inside out also a gravity wave accompanying it accompanies it. So by the time the gravity wave gets out to the periphery of the collapsing core it might subject to the outer material of this collapsing core to near zero g's or much reduced gravity forces allowing it to transition back up the the particle ladder into elementary particles or maybe even just pure gamma ray light uh, the, the part that the most energetic particles that were heading the same way when it when the gravity wave came by propagate out with it at near light speed therefore we have a very amusing scenario of the visible universe being an outward propagating gravity wave shell from that still contained within the black hole. So our normal space time might be entirely contained within a black hole. So that this just leaves one thing out though, the expand the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. Now the acceleration of the expansion of the universe was noticed by um, a, a Berkeley outfit that looked at um, supernovae. Their uh, recession data showed that the closer ones are, are receding at different rates than the further ones away and they deduce that that means that the expansion of the universe is accelerated over the last uh, several billion years. This is a difficult one to model but we might look at some really strange aspects going with the strange thing again uh, that of the curvature of space issues around these types of gravitational wells. If we look at, if we were to put, get outside of a black hole and approach it, we would notice that the outside of the black hole, if we could put a pattern on it that we could see rather than just blackness, we would notice that it would start flattening out as we closed in on it, came within a few radii of it, and the, the back side would crowd around onto the front. Um, when we got up entirely close to it, uh, we would notice that it would flatten out into a complete plane of uh, cutting the universe in half at one radius away from the uh, center of the black hole. If we got completely to within one-tenth of a radius of the surface of a black hole event horizon, it would wrap around us and we would see behind us a porthole containing multiple copies of the, of the universe, the sky. Our propagation through such uh, enormous gravitational influences over the region, the entire region of our space, uh, could, could accommodate uh, such things as the acceleration in the expansion of the universe we see around us. Also a number of issues like how old the universe is, uh, time issues uh, are changed under such enormous gravitational influences and relative speed issues from the source of these gravitational. We could be propagating away at near light speeds from the source of these gravitational influences making our the age of our universe, the curvature of our universe, whether it's concave, flat, or convex, um, enormously complicated and more involved. We, should, we can no longer afford to look merely from the inside out in our universe and make these presumptions. We need to project ourselves beyond as best we can and imagine what more diverse regional influences from a higher scale. We need to get outside and look in. We should take some time and try to devise from the scalar hierarchy a more involved, a more complicated, a more diverse context within which our universe exists rather than presuming that the homogeneity we see at the very largest scales should be significant of anything other than the fact that it's a very small sample size of a very huge universe. My name is Michael Harmon. Thanks for listening and this has been the Thinking Man's Universe.